today is a little ER32 collar chuck. Now, a mate of mine bought this uh, for his ML7, uh, which I use a lot on my Super 7. Now I've acquired it, and I think it's a, from RDG Tools. Comes with a complete set of, of the collets. Uh, handy, handy little chuck, but I want to fit it on the boxwood. So basically, this comes in two parts. A bit threaded to go on the marker series of layers with the register. So it gives us the actual chuck block itself. Register in there, three holes to bolt it down. Obviously, you notice when your collets go in. So, what we're going to do, we have, uh, when I got the box food, there was a, a new uh, back plate for a, I think a little four jaw chuck. Never been fitted, still in the packaging. Uh, so, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use that because I've, I've no other use for it at the moment. Uh, but I'm going to use it, uh, make like a register to go onto here, drill it, tap it, and then we can you know, bolt this on. But I'm also going to leave it if I can, whereas in the future, if I need to, I can put a new register on and use it for a chuck. Or this, and the idea is I can swap once the registers are machined. I should be able to swap them between the Myford and the Boxford. Um, yes, I could make adapter plates to fit on here. I have got a nose spindle, a nose adapter, um, but each time you're sort of incurring a little extra error, and each one of them can add up and there can be a, a, few, you know, a few throw outs. So I'm trying to do this on, on this um, back plate because it's been machined on the layers, it should be. Accurate. So let's have a go at it and see what we end up with. This is it fitted to the Murphy Super 7. Like I say, I use this a lot. Very accurate little chucks. Um, brilliant for, for rain stock. So what we've already done, we've mounted the, the chuck, uh, the, sorry, the chuck, the back plate, already on there. And I just took a light skimming and removed the original register. And what we've got to do now machine this down to fit into into this register so I've got it a few throw off and I'm going to just continue make a you know make a bit more of a little step don't need a lot I've actually done a few checks there's just enough meat left after the threads it's not perfect uh, but it'll do the job because don't forget the three bolts the base will be holding it on and it's only the register just to give it the centralization so we'll just take a few more cuts off there uh, I might speed this video up a little bit, um, it's only a bit of machining, and then we can get on to drilling the, the three holes uh, on the rotary table on the milling machine. There you go, there should be enough of a, a, a register on there now. And I'm just going to take it down to the to the final size to fit, fit into this. And then we can get it onto the milling machine and get the three holes drilled in it. So what I'm actually doing is just sneaking up a little bit on this, just taking a, a quarter of a third at a time, just off the front edge, and then checking that it fits. Um, reason being is, my metric my micrometer has vanished for some reason. Um, so I'm on a metric lathe and I've only got me uh, my imperial 
so I've decided I've got it somewhere close um, but obviously I can't work out how many thousand so I'm just, I've just snuck up on it we're really close there I'm just going to take another little cut and I'll just show you I said just do half the recess just to give us a little lead and you can check it as you can see it's wanting to go on but just not quite there yet you want this a really good fit so we'll finish the full cut I think we'll just give it a little tiny tad. Again, just on the lead in. Also, be very careful if you do this. I'm just going to break that edge just to give us a chance that it'll actually take it. So I think that is going to be perfect. So I'll finish the cut. That is a perfect fit. It will go look a bit tight to put it on, so I'm just going to put it on now because it probably gets stuck. Um, so we'll, we'll take this off now. Um, we'll take it onto the milling machine and on the rotary table and drill the, the three holes. So as I said, what I've done, I've left. I'm going to leave it that size. One, it acts as a bit like a, a bit of a flywheel, it's a bit more, hopefully, a bit more rigidity. Uh, but also, any later dates, if I do need this as a back plate for a little chuck or something, I've also got it. So we're on the rotary table now. Um, what I've mounted on is one of these uh, adapters. Uh, it just bolts through the centre. There's a little lip on the inside which is located into the two mice taper. And this one's the MIFA one. So what we can do is the original boss, as you might call it, the original back plate, as you might call it. Screws on like that. And this then gives us, we can line up our centre or our all uh, to drill the uh, the back plate so I want now we've got that lined up because of the center doesn't matter exactly where the three are uh, as long as it just gives us the distance from the center so what we do we just unbolt this I have one for the uh, Boxford as well these you can pick up most places I think these came from maybe RDZ tools um, they sell a lot of them I know the box of one came from there, so I presume the, the Marfa one probably did. So you can see, you've just got a I've machined them down, so they've got this little step on the back, which just fits inside there snugly. And this bolt goes through, there's a little brass, little tapered bit at the bottom, which pulls into the other end of the, the two mice tape on the on the rotary table that's all we need that's all we do we screw this back plate on and now we know we can drill our three holes using the rotary table so 120 degrees each one. <coughs> Excuse me. We know these are exactly the from the centre that we need them. 
and these need to be uh, tapping size these are the six mil cafe bolts that came with them so we're going to drill these five mil and, and tap them out to, to, to six mil obviously start off with your center drill and then uh, put your five mil through and then uh, tap them after m6 And then what we do is we turn the rotary table 120 degrees to give us the three positions. So let's unlock it. I always make sure that on here, this gives you on the side a rough degrees but this is where you need to put in your minutes um, just make sure that when you come round that you get your zero line back up to your zero so you know you're exactly on and lock your table again So it is all drilled and tapped. So what we can do is make the actual chuck on, which, like I said, it was a good fit. Line the holes up. There you go. That's your first screw. Put the other two screws in and then we'll give it a try on the lathe. There it is, all mounted on. Into the back plate, so now we'll get a, a collar in and we'll give it a test. So time for a test. Now this bear I know is pretty accurate. Um, so I'll just put it in the in the collet chuck now and we'll just give it a quick spin just to see how far out it is. Not 
that. Just a bit of close up on that. I think you can say that's job done. That'll do. Um, don't think you're going to get a, a collet chuck. <laughs> Many more accurate than that. So definitely job done on that one. Um, you can see, got it down to nothing really. Um, so yeah, hope you find this useful. If you have an old back plate and you want to make a collet chuck as the bits you've got, shows you can do it. Um, main thing is just the accuracy. Because you've turned it on this lathe, you know that it, every time you screw it on, it, it, in theory, it should be accurate. If one time you screw it on and it's not, take it off, give it a good clean. Probably just got a, a bit of swarf, a little chip in there or something like that. Um, but that just shows, you know, you can get virtual accuracy uh, in the own workshop. So yeah, hope you find it useful. If you don't mind, like and subscribe to the channel. Until next time, YouTubers, it'll be great.